Thank you, Dark Mother. I will be your Ave Maria. Thank you, Eternal Father. From Hi everyone, welcome. It's Reverend Kim Marie Glenn and welcome to All Souls Inner Faith. For those who are new, welcome to Music and Spirit. Tonight is all about persistent commitment. So I was thinking about that theme that came from Reverend Don Chatfield and it's such a beautiful thing to think about commitment and spend time with that to realize even our community, it takes so much commitment to keep it running, to align with our mission, to align with our vision, the commitment and the energy it takes to do our own spiritual work and be on our path, um, commitment it takes to support each other, to find ways to show up. 
and uh, learn from each other. There's so many different things we can think about with commitment. So may you align with whatever comes to you tonight in terms of commitment. And I wanted to let people know, for those who are new, we do lots of things here at All Souls Interfaith. We have a meditation community, which continues in the morning from 9 to 10. And we've begun to actually add another one right after because we started to do our meditations outside. Um, we'll see how long that lasts for. If it, if it goes well, then we'll continue that. And we're even looking into July on the 12th and the 26th to having outdoor music and spirit services if people want to do that. Imagine, I keep thinking of blankets outside on the fields. So we're committed to finding ways to connect with you, whether it be with Zoom or in person, but to continue to show up and build community together. So I want to welcome our musician this evening. Her name is Marcy Barouche. And I also just wanted to say thank you, Marcy, for letting us use your music. And it's so heartfelt and radiant. I loved Marcy's soul mission. Her soul mission with her music is all about reminding us of the wondrous magnificence of who we truly are. What a beautiful mission something to be committed to, Marcy. And I also just wanted to say, if you want to be more involved in All Souls, we have a lot of different groups going on. We have our search for meaning is still happening. We have a men's group. We have an understanding racism group that started. Um, lots of ways to get involved. So you can go to allsoulsinterfaith.org and see what else we're up to. So with that, I'm going to read our opening words. They're from Hafiz. He's a mystic and Persian poet, and many of you probably have heard of him. May, what you may not know is his name, Hafiz, is actually, it means one who has learned the Quran, you know, sort of inside and out, can recite the Quran, one who really aligns with the Quran and its teachings. So, I thought about that, about persistent commitment and that name, Hafiz. And I also was thinking about what he's speaking of, which is the sun, and how I am so continually inspired by the sun and the way the sun brings light to our world every day. Even on days that are darker, we know that the sun is rising. It's such a consistent gift for humanity. So this is in dedication to the beautiful sun. It's by Hafiz. Even after all this time, the sun never said to the earth, you owe me. Look what happens with a love like that. It lights the whole sky.
Tonight's chalice reading comes to us from Peter Friedrichs. For sleepless nights awaiting the curfew breakers, for anxious hours as a driving instructor, for hours spent on the sidelines cheering and watching school plays, sometimes resting our eyes, for the pressures of breadwinning and wait till your father gets home, for teaching moments and mentoring moments, for making up answers when you just don't know, but are expected to because you know everything, for scrapes and boo-boos and kisses and band-aids, for hugs and kisses and silliness and play, for bedtime stories and early morning ice time, for all the aftershave and ties received as gifts, for handing over the car keys and waves goodbye, for father-daughter wedding dances and cradling grandchildren for the first time. For all the moments and all the meaning in the role of a lifetime, we light our chalice this evening for fathers and for fatherhood. Happy Father's Day here at All Souls this evening. 
we recognize and honor all of the fathers in our lives and give thanks for the deep impact they've had on our formation. We are continuing in our series this month on what it means to build beloved community here at All Souls and in our larger society. And so it seems appropriate on Father's Day that we're considering persistent commitment because successful communities that are deeply tied to one another are marked by members who are deeply committed to the success of that community. So we're going to explore that a little bit. And I should share with you that one of my role models about what commitment means is my father. John William Chatfield was one of three children born to Donald and Luella Chatfield. And I had the good fortune of being raised by him. During the course of my childhood and adulthood, he was always there in many different ways. And it struck me that the ways that he demonstrated his commitment to the role of being a father are also key indicators for us about how we can build beloved community here at All Souls. And so I'd like to think about three of those characteristics. Um, when I think about dad, I knew that I could always count on him to show up to pony up and to cheer up. And so we'll be taking a look at each of those this evening, while of course drawing from the traditions and wisdom of many faiths. So first let's think a little bit about showing up. When I think about my relationship with my father, I could count on him to show up uh, not just as a child coming to school events or games, but I could also count on him later in life to show up, especially when I was in need. I remember once my brother, who was far away out in New Mexico for a summer job, had a mishap with his car, and Dad thought nothing about it to take a few days off work and to drive out to New Mexico to help my brother through that situation. Many years after that, I was facing a very rough time in my life. Once again, dad dropped everything and traveled to be with me and make sure that I had what I need to navigate those days. Within the context of spiritual communities, showing up takes many forms. And we can see in the writings of the great spiritual teachers, the importance of showing up for regular spiritual disciplines, whether it's uh, the teachings of Buddhism or Hinduism about developing a practice of prayer and meditation, a practice of observing and training the mind, or in other traditions, such as Judaism, teaching the importance of showing up and being there for the well-being of the broader community. All of the world's great faith traditions speak in various ways about being present to one another. Now, of course, that's a challenge for us in these days when we still are not able to freely meet together uh, and to show up in physical ways that we have been so accustomed to. And so that's why I am particularly proud of the way that All Souls has been showing up during the past few months. I've been amazed to watch at the number of people who are attending not only online meditations or classes or groups, but also the people who are reaching out to one another by phone or stopping by to take a socially distant walk. 
So showing up is a, a, an essential part of building a truly beloved community, a community in which we know and can count on others being present for us. Now, in today's world where there are many opportunities for spiritual enrichment and spiritual practice, there are some who operate kind of like spiritual tourists. They may drop in and dip a toe in this community for an experience there or another community, and, and that's perfectly fine. I think that's a healthy way to expand, extend our boundaries and to learn more about others. And it's so important for us at All Souls to develop a loyal and supportive group who are showing up regularly and being here for one another. Showing up is an important part of building beloved community. The second thing that I noticed in my father's life is that he always ponied up. You know, that phrase, to pony up, uh, is an interesting phrase. It, some speculate that it comes from the Latin, the root word for money, which is pronounced pony. Um, but it means to, to pay what we owe or to pay our fair share. And within a spiritual community, this can be a sensitive topic to raise. So I'd like to start first with thinking about how different faith traditions have approached this. Nearly every faith tradition in some way teaches about the bringing of first fruits as offerings. And so it's not unusual to see on Hindu or Buddhist altars, the first fruits, flowers and vegetables. First fruits and bringing those were seen as a way of acknowledging that the divine is our provider and those first fruits should be offered to support others. Within the Jewish tradition, the tithe is a concept that was developed the concept of giving 10% of earnings. And that teaching about tithing has been extended into other faiths as well. Also within the Jewish tradition, some temples and synagogues have membership fees or charge for tickets to special services. Within the Buddhist community, uh, I am particularly taken by uh, the process of putting out a jar or bowl to collect dana or gratitude. And in working with many Buddhist groups over the years, I've always been amazed to watch how the community watches the money coming in to that container and always make sure that there's enough. So as we think about this within the context of all souls as an interfaith gathering, what's our approach? Well, the approach that we're taking is to ask people to make pledges, to determine for yourself what's comfortable and what's appropriate for you. And so we're almost ready to conclude our pledge drive for this coming fiscal year. We'll be tallying up all of those pledges on Sunday, June the 28th, and that will allow your board and your leadership to make decisions about how we can build our budget for the coming year. All Souls has been wonderfully blessed for many years with a very generous benefactor and the money coming from that benefactor has in some cases led to an assumption that we don't need to worry about money. Now, I would agree we don't need to worry about it, but we do need to step up and make sure we're building a truly self-sufficient community. And as you think about the pledge that 
you are planning to make for next year, you might just want to think about some of the regular expenses that are involved to make sure our community and our ministry are operating smoothly. The fact that we need to have electricity for our lights and air conditioning and heating, the fact that we need to pay health insurance benefits for our staff, the fact that we need to keep up the building. Just this past week, part of our heating and cooling system broke, and it appears that we're facing a bill of at least $5,000 to repair that. So just as you have expenses to operate your household, to make sure that All Souls is a healthy and smoothly running organization, we have similar expenses. And ponying up is an important way of making sure that we're stepping up and we're carrying our share of that. Of course, we're also grateful for people who help in ways in addition to donating money that can include talent and time. One of my friends is affiliated with a large Buddhist Sangha that has about 40 acres of rolling pasture land. And part of the way that people show up there is to volunteer to come out and mow the grass. We have many volunteers at All Souls who are helping in different ways. We're so grateful for the way that you show up and for the way that gifts continue to come in. I've been gratified during this time that we're not meeting together to see that our donations are staying pretty steady. And so we are deeply grateful for that. And we pray that that will continue in the year to come. Finally, I'd like to talk a little bit about how my dad was there to cheer me up and how that's an important part of us building beloved community. Dad had a way of knowing when something was not going well for me, and he would find a way to make sure that I had a chance to talk about it. Now, like a lot of dads of my era, he wasn't big on telling me that he loved me when I was younger, but I could always tell that he did love me by the fact that he worked to cheer me up when I was feeling discouraged. Interestingly enough, as the years went by, Dad was more and more able to express his love verbally while still cheering me up. So how does that apply to us in the spiritual setting? One story comes to mind from the Christian tradition, and that's about the Apostle Barnabas. The name Barnabas means son of encouragement. And Barnabas valued deeply his spiritual community. And in fact, he sold a piece of property and gave the entirety of the proceeds to support his spiritual community. And then later when he was named as an apostle, he became known as someone who was there to lift up others. And it's important for us to be present to one another in our All Souls community to do that as well. To have our eyes open, to have our ears open, to be watching those around us and to be present to offer a word of cheer or encouragement. I'm grateful to many of you who've been there for me during the past year. You know that the first year of a new pastor can be a stressful time. And so your words of encouragement and support to me have made such a huge difference. And I think it's important for all of us as members of this community to be there to cheer one another, to lift each other up. So as we prepare to move into our new fiscal year, starting on July 1, it is my prayer that we will be present with one another to show up, 
to be there for one another, to be present at activities, to support the ministry of all souls, to pony up, to make sure that we are bearing our fair share and making sure that All Souls is financially strong to meet our mission and vision. And finally, to cheer up, to listen and observe carefully and to provide support and encouragement for all in our community. I wanna thank you for being part of this community. And I wanna thank you for the role that you've already played to develop the deepness of meaning and joy that we experience here. Many blessings for your week to come. Yeah.
We come now to the time in our service for prayer and meditation. So I invite you to find a spot where you can settle in for a few moments, a place where you can let go and focus on being here in this present moment. And as you settle in, you may wish to take a nice deep breath all the way in Hold it at the top for just a moment, and then exhale slowly, allowing your body to begin relaxing and your mind to begin slowing. And if it feels comfortable to allow your eyes to be gently closed or to fix your gaze softly on an object across the room from you. And I invite you to join me now in a spirit of meditation and prayer. Today we honor and offer gratitude for our fathers in whatever form or fashion they have come into our lives. And so let us now hold in our hearts our biological fathers, stepfathers, adoptive, and foster fathers. Holding them here in our hearts, extending love and gratitude. giving thanks for these fathers in our lives. And now let us hold in our hearts our grandfathers, remembering them with gentleness, holding them here in our hearts, and extending to them love and much gratitude. giving thanks for the grandfathers in our lives. And now I invite us to hold in our hearts our spiritual fathers, those who have taught us on the spiritual path, holding them in our hearts and extending love and thankfulness to them offering thanks for the spiritual fathers who have touched our lives deeply. And now I invite us to hold in our hearts all of the uncles, brothers, and friends who, whether they know it or not, have helped to fill the role of father in our lives. 
extending to them love and deep gratefulness. giving thanks for all of those who've played the role of Father in our lives. And today we pray that we will remember the impact that these people have had on us as individuals and as a community. And may we also remember that this relationship is not one-sided, that we as a spiritual community are called to support and empower the fathers of the world, no matter how they came into their roles and regardless of their successes or failures. Let us raise up their triumphs and may we have the grace to forgive them their failures. Come, let us love our fathers and each other. And so it is. Amen. We come now to the time in our service for offerings. Of course, we're not able to pass an offering plate during these days of uh, virtual services, but you can go to our website, allsoulsinterfaith.org, and easily find a button that you can click to make a donation. You can, of course, also mail a check to us at the office. And we're most grateful for your gifts and how they support our ministry at All Souls. However you give to All Souls, whether it's through money or time or talents, we want to recognize those gifts now and bless them. So I invite you to take your hand and symbolically hold in your hand what it is you are giving to this community as we bless these gifts. Divine love, as me, blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, and all that I give. Now, we are in our stewardship campaign for pledges for the coming fiscal year at All Souls, and we have been hearing a number of testimonials from community members over the past few weeks, and I thought it was important for me this evening to provide a testimonial as your pastor. I first learned about All Souls from an email with exciting news about the lead pastor opening. My first visit to All Souls was in February of last year, and I was immediately struck, very deeply struck, by the warmth and the caring of everyone who greeted me during that time. Karen's first visit to All Souls with me was in March of last year, when I came to provide a homily and to interview. And once again, it felt that we were enveloped with love and support and encouragement during that entire weekend. And that played a huge role in us choosing to come here. The things about All Souls that resonate most deeply with me are our commitment to truly being an interfaith center to being open to learn spiritual truths from all traditions, the openness to find and create ways to share both within our community and in our broader society. I do think that as your pastor, it's important for me to be giving financially to all souls. I've had some people say, well, you're getting a salary 
from the organization, why would you give back? Um, and to me, it, it's simply a matter of commitment. It's a matter of showing that the success of our work together is something that I share in and something that making a financial commitment is important to me and to Karen. So as we conclude the All In Stewardship Campaign, wrapping up at the end of this month, it's my prayer that all of us will carefully consider our pledge for next year and provide the level of support that feels right and comfortable to us to help all souls continue to thrive and grow.
Our closing words are a quick vow of commitment that I wrote when thinking of the word commitment. This is what came and it goes like this. I am committed to peace and connection with the divine source. I'm committed to honoring what source is for everyone, even when it's not the same. I am committed to not basking in freedom until everyone and everything is free. I'm committed to remaining awake even when I'm tired and would long for sleep. I am committed to remind myself that dreams are possible in waking hours. And I too have a dream and we all dream. I am committed to building bridges within my own opposition and fostering bridges of connection. I am committed to finding similarities in faith and religions. I'm committed to seeing everything as sacred and noticing the commonalities like looking out at a Vermont field and seeing cows and hearing their moves and knowing it may be as similar as dedicated monks in a monastery reciting mantra. I'm committed to the fly that continues to land on my nose as much as I'm committed to the guru in my heart that reminds me of my essential true rhythms. I am committed to you and your truth and me and my truth all at once. For you and I are of each other, and I am committed to the earth who holds us all and is never ending in her commitment to us. I am committed to protecting our earth and being in community. I am committed. May we all continue to be committed in whatever ways that we are and finding what it is that we want to be committed to, aligning to what our soul calls for, aligning to what is being asked of us. Have a wonderful week, everyone.